Poland. One of our great allies. One year ago, the world was bracing for the fall of Kyiv. Well, I've just come from a visit to Kyiv, and I can report Kyiv stands strong. <laughs> Kyiv stands proud. It stands tall. And most important, it stands free. All democracies are being tested. And the questions we faced were as simple as they were profound. Would we respond, or would we look the other way? Would we be strong, or would we be weak? Would we, you, we, would, we, would we the, all of our allies, would be united or divided? One year later, we know the answer. We did respond. We would be strong. We would be united. And the world would not look the other way. We also face fundamental questions about the commitment to the most basic of principles. Would we stand up for the sovereignty of nations? Would we stand up for the right of people to live free from naked aggression? Would we stand up for democracy? One year later, we know the answers. Yes, we would stand up for sovereignty, and we did. Yes, we would stand up for the right of people to live free from aggression, and we did. And we would stand up for democracy, and we did. And yesterday, I had the honor to stand with President Zelensky in Kyiv to declare that we will keep standing up for these same things, no matter what. <clears throat> when President Putin ordered his tanks to roll into Ukraine, he thought we would roll over. He was wrong. The Ukrainian people are too brave. America, Europe, a coalition of nations, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, we were too unified. Democracy was too strong. Instead of an easy victory, he perceived and predicted. Putin left with burnout tanks and Russia's forces in, delay, in, dis in disarray. He thought he'd get the findalization of NATO. Instead, he got the NATOization of Finland and Sweden. He thought NATO would fracture and divide. Instead, NATO is more united and more unified than ever, than ever before.